Today's movie features a satanic go looking for love. I mean, really, what more do you need to know? Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're tackling Jose Ramon Larraza's sleazy black magic flick. Black Candles. Released in 1982, Black Candles is basically a Rosemary's Baby riff, only with a lot more sleaze and unpleasantness. This one has it all. A satanic goat, a wannabe Rasputin, a guy who looks like Phil Collins, tons of nudity, and plenty of satanic shenanigans. But is Black Candles gory enough to summon up a five barf bag rating? Let's get to the gore and find out. Oh, and before we get started, today's video is sponsored by patrons Dusan Bankovic, sorry about murdering your name, Aunt C, and Jeff Griffin. If you'd like to sponsor some videos and help free me from the shackles of YouTube's tyranny, you'll find a link to my Patreon in the pinned comment and description below. But enough of the horror geek pledge drive. You know what time it is. Let's get bloody. Ah, oh, I guess we're starting in media res this week. This girl's walking over to the actual movie. And this guy's getting impatient. I thought the crew was gonna be here at nine. Yeah, Dollar Tree Phil Collins is not looking happy. Just sing a few bars of Sue Studio, Phil. That cheers everyone up. Well, sure, the movie has technically started, but I guess we can stop to look at some headshots. Oh god, we've got sex in under a minute. Jay and I are gonna have our work cut out for us this week. Thank god they stopped boning long enough for us to check out her sweet necklace. Looks like she might be a juggalette. Whoop whoop! Ugh, I really don't want to see him give her a tonsil exam with his tongue. Dude's gonna suck her fillings out. I mean, discount Phil Collins is taking the whole into deep thing a little too literally here. <laughs> Let's cut away before I get demonetized. Sweet voodoo doll. Very lifelike. At any rate, it looks like someone's about to get pricked. Hell yeah. <laughs> no, well, sort of no. I mean, that girl was definitely getting it, but I meant this voodoo doll, you pervs. Dollar Tree Phil is like, I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Tell Genesis I'm gonna have to cancel the tour. And Fulci I zoom in a non-Fulci movie. I'm not gonna lie, she seems pretty calm for just having a guy die during sex. Wait a minute, hot fantasies? I thought this was Black Candles. Did someone send me an adult film by mistake? Great, someone got credits all over the windows again. And we're on the runway. Pull up, pull up, you're gonna hit the credits. Stock footage too, we're off to a good start. And now we're in the terminal. I bet Susie Banyan is gonna walk through here on her way to Suspiria. Written and directed by Joseph Bronstein, who's really just Jose Ramon Larraz trying to convince you he's not Spanish. Anyway, it's a good thing we're at the claim station because these two clearly have some baggage. But I came here to see London. The house of my brother's near the city. We can go to London as often as you like, Robert. Baggage carousel exposition over, it's time for them to drive over to join us in the actual movie. No rush, just take your time. Jesus, we finally arrived. This movie's only 86 minutes long and they're already padding the runtime. They hit inside and it was nice of Jose Larraz to find the absolute worst place to put the camera for this shot. <laughs> you should have just put it behind a wall or something. The bad news is the power is out. The good news is Robert has a bick that's apparently been set to brighter than the sun brightness. And title mention. And why do you have all these black candles? Well, technically it is, although the movie insists we're watching hot fantasies. Meanwhile, Liberace prepares for tonight's concert. Robert's ready to take charge. Let me get this fire going. No way Santa's gonna ambush us tonight. And now we've got the J&B. Let's get this party started. Turns out Robert's girlfriend is Phil Collins' sister. Who'd have guessed? There's a family resemblance. I think this was the rejected cover photo for No Jacket Required. Hmm, interior decorating by Hieronymus Bosch with a generous assist from Anton LaVey. I mean, you do you, but if I go to a house where they have a wall of demon photos, I'm probably gonna find a hotel. Are you interested in demonology? Yeah, this is my go-to pickup line for a while, too. <laughs> never worked for me, either. House establishing shot! I know we never left the house, but damn it, we still need to establish it. Upstairs, Amazon Basics Tipper Gore isn't happy about the demonic artwork. <laughs> you kids even remember Tipper Gore? Christ, I'm old. Well, they're busy jibber-jabbering, Fiona's here for the peep show. And she gets what she came for because there's more sex. Prutube is gonna love this one. Maybe this really is hot fantasies because even Fiona is over here giving herself a mammogram. I mean, is she turned on or passing a kidney stone? Expression could go either way. Then shit gets even weirder. This is probably not a good outfit for walking through the woods. But Phil is here like it's just another day in paradise. Oh, hi there. Then it gets super weird as these two go all Cersei and Jamie Lannister. No way I can show that, but it definitely looks like someone here is an easy lover. 
but it was all a dream. And now she's late for football practice. Carol heads downstairs to find she's got a sweet new photo from the Phil Collins fan club. Man, remember when you join a fan club by mail and get some terrible picture? Do kids even do that anymore? This is interrupted by Fiona. Listen, Carol, do you ever get that not-so-fresh feeling? Then Carol asks this. Do you smell incense? Incense? No, but another word that starts with I-N-C-E for sure. You and your brother are going to hell. Sinners. And another house establishing shot. Yeah, we never left the house, but it's important you remember we're still in a house. Ah, <laughs> great, now Rasputin's here. He kinda looks like an evil Gabe Kaplan. And he's got ominous exposition to deliver. What happens if she finds out what we did to her brother? Look into my eyes. I'm the czar now. I swear to God, if you went down to Central Casting and said, we need a generic evil bad guy, this is exactly what you'd get. Oh, look, Nana crocheted him a sweet sweater for Christmas. Then we head out for some grave developments, because we're in the cemetery. I guess the good news is that maybe we'll find a plot out here. At this point, any plot will do. I will say, it is nice they filmed this in first-person perspective. I am curious if the cameraman is three feet tall, though. Back at the house, the maid is looking to help herself to some of these sweet crocheted sweaters. And since nothing is happening here, let's stop by the stable, where this horse is getting new shoes. I know they call these things horseshoes, but honestly, wouldn't calling them clip-clops make more sense? Yeah, we might have a new contender for worst dad joke in show history. With the horse shoe, let's stop for a drink. I'm not sure if this is a beverage or a science experiment. Chug, chug, chug. And now it's time for a no emote acting showdown. Which of these ladies will break down and show an emotion first? Jesus, this is the most boring slumber party ever. Next, we jump over here where the maid is milking this stud. Hell yeah. No, not like that, you purr. She's literally milking this goat. Also, if this isn't a goat, don't leave me a comment telling me what it actually is because I do not care. You'd better stop that or you'll get him too excited. Why don't I feel like this is about to turn into a manuel in America? Then it gets even pervier. I'm sure you've never seen a billy goat mounting a woman. Uh, young H.R. Giger here is like, this is so messed up. And now it's time for more sex. We'll just skip past that. Eventually, Rasputin shows up. He's all like, sinners. Oh god, here comes the goat. And I don't mean greatest of all time. Jesus, this movie is bonkers. Prudtube is gonna shit a brick if I even say what's going on here. Needless to say, Black Phillip is definitely living deliciously. Even young Chef Boy RD here is like, this is too much for me. God, I've never been so happy to see a house establishing shot. Meanwhile, Budget Joan Collins is over here working on her next plot to ruin Crystal Carrington. And more house establishing shots. Carol's like, yeah, this shit's getting weird. I'm gonna go out to see if I can find a better movie to be in. Watch as she does her best to not emote. And here's some exposition, just in case you weren't sure what was going on. Sometimes we kidded him about his unnaturally good fortune, telling him that he had a pact in secret with the devil. Must not emote. Back in our other movie, we secretly replaced Carol's boyfriend's Mountain Dew with a cup of urine. Let's see if he notices. It's a good thing we're out here in the garden. This way Fiona can give him some encouragement. I've spent years studying these herbs. You could say I've been doing it for a very long time. <laughs> now she's gonna give him some sage advice. And it looks like her diabolical plan is to steal Carol's man. She's definitely gonna leg up on the competition. I mean, I guess it's good she's already got a pearl necklace. Hell yeah. No, not like that, you pervs. She's really wearing pearls. And then she makes her move. I'll give this movie one thing. It's really great at making kissing look as repulsive as possible. Everyone looks like they're trying to tongue out the other person's tonsils. I mean, there's more tongue play in this video than at a Gene Simmons show. Guess Carol knows those two are off making satanic babies because she's packing her bags. Robert seems unfazed because he's busy smoking a pipe. Hell yeah. <laughs> no, he's really smoking a pipe, you pervs. Settle down. Carol, meanwhile, feels something evil is afoot. There are such phenomena as malevolent powers that are able to influence an individual. Against his will, Robert. Lance Henriksen, care to offer your thoughts on this? That's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Later, she gets a checkup from the doctor. His diagnosis is that she needs a personality infusion. We then jump to this barn. Fiona's like, I sure hope Black Phillip is ready for the main event. Turns out their big plan to keep Carol in line is basically this. Confuse her mentally. Um, I'm pretty sure she's already mentally confused. I mean, just look at her. That chick is higher than mortgage interest rates. She's busy thinking deep thoughts, Rasputin here is getting ready for the Black Mass. But too bad for them, Carol is peeping. I'll be lurking for you. Undeterred, Rasputin checks the script. 
Huh, doesn't really say much. Just spout gibberish while people writhe around naked. Let's roll with that, I guess. And I don't want to hear anyone complain about my fingernails ever again. There are a ton of black candles here, but I can't show them because all the boobs. Hot Fantasies might have been the more accurate title after all. And look out! Carol squeeze the switch teams. One of us! One of us! Carol does not look thrilled by this development. Look, don't sweat it, lady. There are other fish in the sea, or other warlocks in the coven. The next morning, she tells him what she thinks of him. You smell. Hey, no need to get personal. And then Carol gets sprayed in the face. Hell yeah. No, not like that. From the shower nozzle. Fiona, meanwhile, is like, sometimes you just have to stop and smell the roses. And again, if those aren't roses, I don't care. I'm not a botanist. Nothing to see here, folks. Just a couple of wild and crazy Satanists having some tea after the Black Mass. Inside, I think this is Carol. I can't be sure, though. I'm not used to seeing her with clothes on. Hey, are you guys having a Satanic Mass down there without me again? God, look at all the spots the cleaning lady missed. Just a tremendous buildup of gunk. Gah, respect my personal space, movie. I don't want these people licking me. Whatever you do, don't emote. And since it's been like five minutes, guess it's time for more stuff I can't show you. I will say it's not the kind of tender love the Force MDs sang about, though, because Bob's coming through the back door if you catch my drift. Hell yeah. Yeah, exactly like that, you pervs. Afterwards, it's hard to tell if she's pissed off or happy. This chick has the range of a Prius with no battery. Yeah, I'm gonna need a drink to get through the rest of this movie, too. What the hell is going on with this shot? I've seen cereal that was less grainy than this. She wants to know what's in the cellar, and Fiona clues her in. Heating systems, water pipes, and old odds and ends. You know, like satanic altars or your Valpurgis night decorations. Just the usual stuff. Man, this dinner party looks just like that one in Nightmare on Elm Street 5. Bon appetit, bitches! Oh wow, Tammy Faye Baker is here! But dinner is interrupted when Carol's IBS flares up. Back upstairs, Fiona's about to hook up with Robert again. She's gonna put some Luther Vandross on to set the mood. I feel like a peeping Tom from this angle. I gotta say, there's like a late career Joe D'Amato level of intercourse in this movie. The next day, he's back with Carol, who's either completely clueless or happy being this dude's doormat. So, what's it like hooking up with Fiona? It's marvelous. And this is the most emoting we've seen from Carol in this entire movie. I beg you, Robert, in the name of God. You know that God is nothing more than a metaphor. Oh, God, it's going to turn into a mansplaining meme. Oh, baby, talk theology to me. It turns me on. Oh, it's okay, Carol. I'd cry if I had to star in this movie, too. Hey, it's Dr. Paul Bearer. I bet the Undertaker's around here somewhere. And, of course, this leads to more unappealing sex. If they really want kids to be abstinent, they should just make them watch Black Candles. Thank God for the house establishing shot. I feel like these two might need to go to couples counseling. And he's like, sorry, gotta cut this short. I'm gonna be late for Kane's Hell in a Cell match tonight. Let's check in on Carol. She's like, football practice? She heads out in search of Robert and look out. She's being stalked by the cameraman. And wanders right into this jump scare. <laughs> Dr. Paul just wants to take her to WrestleMania with him, but everyone else is going to be jealous if they find out. Sweet, Metallica's playing for whom the bell tolls somewhere nearby. And then Dr. Paul lets the jump scare come to him. <laughs> That's a new wrinkle. Hey, you need any help in there? I'll just stand out here and watch you get pummeled if you don't. Oh, sweet. It looks like we might be getting a Buried Alive match. I love those. Or maybe it's something much worse. <laughs> I don't like the looks of this. Oh, God. They're gonna make him squeal like a pig. I'm gonna be pretty judicious with the cuts here. Brutube's head would explode if I tried to even clearly describe half of this. But yeah, dude's definitely a sheath for that sword. And now we can watch Carol do some of the worst running in horror film history. She's probably struggling because she's just not used to running with clothes on. I mean, she runs about as well as she acts. I'd like to tell you where we are, but apparently there was no budget for lighting, so just use your imagination, I guess. Carol's broken through the secondary, but gets blindsided by Troy Polamalu, who saves a touchdown. They bring her back, and as a gift, they give her a taste of some pimp hand. I'm starting to think there might not be any pimp hand in this movie. Glad that crisis was averted. And I guess now we're gonna get her ready for Black Phillip. Weirdest episode of Dynasty ever. But if she wants to hook up with Satan's goat, it appears she's going to have to earn it. Then they rub her with lotion, like this is Buffalo Bill's basement. I can't show you that because, you know, boobs. Sure hope this film's entire climax isn't boobs. I guess I can show you this, maybe, or this, but that's about it. I will say, at least this movie finally gave me something to crow about. 
Don't leave me comments telling me this is a raven. I'm not an ornithologist. Rasputin's finally here, so I guess this party can get rolling. Probably just some strawberry boons farm in that chalice. A whole lot of nakedness again, but here's something I can show you. And really, this whole scene is basically like Bob, Carol, Ted, Alice, and Satan. I bet about three of you get that joke. So yeah, a lot of stuff I can't show here. You can kind of guess what happens at the Black Mass, though. Needless to say, it's all very titillating. And the house establishing shot saves us again. I've never loved house establishing shots more than I have in this movie. Oh no, they're arriving at the house again? Did this movie just lap itself? If you tell me this was all a dream. No, 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 no. The movie cannot be starting over. Please God, no. Aw, oh, what the hell? Damn you, Jose Ramon LaRoz. Turns out this movie's too lazy to even end. There are no credits, just like three minutes of this music. I kept waiting for the swerve, but it never showed up. Kinda like your deadbeat dad at Christmas. So, what have we learned from Black Candles? Well, for starters, that Hot Fantasies was probably a more accurate title. Like Jess Franco, LaRoz is a bit of an acquired taste. He was nowhere near as prolific as Franco, but it's easy to look at their work through the same lens. Arguing whether LaRoz was better than Franco is sorta of like arguing whether it's better to get kicked in the groin with a steel toe boot or hit there with a hammer. Either way, it's gonna suck. But I love both of these crazy bastards. Their films might not always be good, but they're so weird and bizarre you kind of fall in love with them anyway. But enough about that. Can Black Candles summon enough demons to fill five barf bags with splatter? Let's go to the gore card! In terms of gross anatomy, this one is a little light. We watch Phil Collins have a stroke and Dr. Paul Bearer make a sword disappear, but that's about it. However, there's plenty of gross anatomy in terms of hairy men mauling women. I'd give Black Candle zero barf bags, but all the tongue baths are so gross I'm adding a bag just for that alone. So one barf bag here. This is not a sick flick, but it's wild if you like devils and skin. Looking for a better Jose Ramon Larraz film? Then be sure to check out my review of Edge of the Axe. You'll find a link here on the screen. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters.